52. So we'll have them on here in a few minutes. All right, we're broadcasting on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network, and our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. Uh, so you can uh, watch us there also. And we're broadcasting on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation WFDF uh, here in Detroit as well, and on 9, 10 uh, a.m.'s um, Facebook page. So welcome to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m., the Superstation Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Monday, April 18th, 2022, and we are live. Calling numbers 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600 is the call-in number if you have a question or comment. And our guest uh, today is going to be uh, Professor James Small. Um, he's a grandmaster scholar, warrior, historian, uh, former professor at uh, City College in New York. So we're going to have him on here in a few minutes. And he's going to talk about the uh, One Africa Power and Unity Conference that's taking place um, in Detroit, uh, April 30th, uh, 2022 through uh, May 1st. OK, you've heard me talk about it uh, here on the show uh, before. All right. Call the numbers 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600 is the call-in number if you have a question or comment. Now, also, um, I saw this story, and Good Morning America had a story about this. Colin Kaepernick says he's ready to play backup quarterback if need be to get back in the NFL. We know Colin Kaepernick has been working out, uh, uh, last I heard, five days a week or something like that since he was uh, unofficially banned from the NFL and uh, after taking a knee and leading a social protest movement. Uh, but he says he's ready to uh, get back in the league and play. All right. So we'll discuss that as well. All right. Now on the African History Network show, we focus on educating, empowering and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world, because right now this correct wrong behavior. What you do for yourself what you do to yourself and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself. So when you control the radius of a man or woman's thoughts, you can control the compass of his or her actions because the mind can't do or teach what it doesn't know. Now, we deal with a number of different topics here on the African History Network show. We deal with current events, and history, politics, education, economic empowerment, um, love, sex, health issues, and much, much more. Sign up for our email newsletter. Text the word Kemet, K-E-M-E-T, the 22828. Text the word Kemet, K-E-M-E-T, the 22828 uh, to sign up for our email newsletter as well. Okay. All right. So. Uh, we're going to have Professor Jane Small here in a, a minute. Um, Shakita, check your email. Now, uh, also on today's show, uh, we're going to talk some about um, Passover and Easter. And Professor Small has an excellent uh, lecture, Christianity, uh, Judaism, and Islam, Fragments of African Spirituality where he talks about the um uh he talks about the history of easter but he also talks about passover and he talks about uh uh as i talked about yesterday uh so the radio station was shut down uh for uh chris uh, for easter okay radio station was shut down for the holiday for easter but i still went on and broadcast it uh on my platforms and on blog and uh we uploaded that to we'll have that up on blog talk radio as well so it's on our social media platform so yesterday i dealt with uh eastern uh, easter origins uh pagan uh, pagan traditions and um uh the exodus and black people and we did almost two hours uh yesterday so if you missed that presentation uh, if you missed that show that I did, visit our website, African, uh, uh, follow us on Facebook, the African History Network on Facebook, 
and our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. And uh, we have it there. And it was uh, uh, it was uh, it was fantastic. People really learned a lot. But one of the things I talked about is um, I referenced. Let me know. When we have Professor Small on the line. I referenced uh, P Professor Small's lecture where he deals with how. Um, when you talk about the Passover and, and this whole misunderstanding dealing with Egypt and the Exodus, all this stuff. But you're talking about the murder of African children, okay, dealing with the Passover as well. So we're going to discuss that. And we know that uh, Godfather of Harlem has been renewed for a third season, okay? Godfather of Harlem has been renewed for a third season. And he's a historical uh, consultant on Godfather of Harlem. So um, we're, we're going to discuss that a little bit as well, okay? Now, the... Uh, if we give you a little background information on Professor James Small for those that are not familiar. All right. Uh, and I want to bring up this picture here as well. Okay, let's get that up. Okay, because we're going to have him on the phone line in just a minute. Okay, so Professor James Small is a scholar, a scholar activist, dynamic speaker, organizational, organizational consultant, uh, he is also CEO of Sanaa Lodge Enterprise, uh, Ghana Limited, CEO and president, uh, African-American management company, Ghana Limited, international vice president, uh, organization of Afro-American unity, the OAAU, which was Malcolm X's organization when he leads the Nation of Islam. Uh, he's a priest of Oya, the Orisha Oya. He's a Baba Larisha. Uh, uh, in the Ifa tradition, which is the spiritual system of the uh, Yoruba of Nigeria, uh, and past president of the Eastern Region of the Association for the Study of Classical African Civilization, ASCAC, Association for the Study of Classical African Civilization. Professor James Small has been an activist since his teenage years. His in-depth knowledge thought-provoking and calm delivery are influential elements to break the programming of miseducation. He studies extensively, uh, he, he, he has studied extensively with Dr. John Henry Clark, Dr. Yosef Ben Yakinen, Dr. Leonard Jeffries, who's one of my teachers we had on, here on the show April 4th. And Dr. Leonard Jeffries, he, he was my first interview that I did back March 10th, 2010. OK, and Professor James Small, we had him on in 2010. Also, he, Professor Small was one of my first interviews as well. I met Professor Small uh, through Dr. Leonard Jeffries, uh, Dr. Ivan Van Sertema, Dr. Asa Hilliard, Dr. Wade Nobles. Uh, Dr. Wade Nobles was one of my first interviews also in 2010 as well. Dr. Amos Wilson and Dr. Francis Cress Wilson. Uh, we met, we definitely uh, missed those ancestors. And Dr. Wilson, we had here on the show three times. For, do we have Professor Small on the line? For, for 11 years, Professor Small served as principal bodyguard to the late Ella Collins, the sister of Malcolm X, the then president of the Organization of Afro-American Unity, and was the Imam of Muslim Mosque, Inc., founded by Malcolm X as well. That's the other organization. That's the religious organization Malcolm founded, Muslim Mosque, Inc. Now, between the years of 1966 and 1980, Professor Small held membership in the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committees. Um, okay. All right. So we have Professor Small on, on the line. Uh, between the years of 1966 and 1980, Professor Small held membership in the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC, the NAACP, and OAAU. So he was covering all the bases. All right, we want to welcome back to the African History Network show one of my teachers, Professor James Small. Hotel brother, how you doing today? Hey, Michael, how you doing? Oh, I'm all, all right, man. Well, you know, we we got snow today, brother. We got, it looked like a blizzard yeah, outside. We might get some snow tonight. Man. This is weird weather. <laughs> Dude, it looked like a blizzard outside. What's that thing they call it? A nor'easter or a, a global warming? No. Global warming. Global warming. We've been having this year, it's going to be closer to that. 
Yep, exactly, exactly. Well, look, we're coming up here on a break in just a minute, but you're going to be here um, uh, uh, at the uh, uh, One Africa Power and Unity Conference, April third, uh, April thirtieth through May first, and I'll be there as well. So, uh, just let people know uh, uh, what's the name of your presentation. What What are you going to talk about briefly? We're going to pick it up on the other side of the break. I'm going to talk about. Rebirthing African consciousness. Rebirthing African consciousness. Oh wow! Okay, absolutely, absolutely. And 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 you, brother, you you have so much information, man. You and I have, have had private conversations. You have so much information. So you you're the perfect person to do this. Okay, just hold the line. We're coming up on a break. We'll be back in a few minutes. We're, we're talking to Professor James Small and his presentation at the. One Africa Power and Unity Conference. He's going to talk about uh, rebirthing African consciousness. Uh, we'll be, we, you listen to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, the Future Radio. I'm Michael M. Hotep. Uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. All right, stand by, everybody. Stand by. All right. All right, stand by. How's everybody doing? Share this broadcasting and social media platforms. Invite your friends to tune in. Where can Godfather Harlem? Okay, Godfather Harlem is on cable. It's on Epics. On cable. It's on Epics. E P I X. So check your cable listings. You may already have it. I had to add it. It was like $4.99 a month or something like that. I think I had to add it. Uh, now, you may be able to stream it. I'm not sure. I got it through Xfinity. So you may be able to stream it also. Okay. Um, but check that out. Uh, Godfather of Harlem is coming back for season three. And let me pull this information up here. We've got this for... Okay, back from breaking three minutes, everybody. Stand by. Back from breaking three minutes. Stand by. Stand by, stand by, everybody. Have from breaking two minutes. Okay, we're gonna post a link here. You can register for the One Africa Power and Unity Conference. Back from break in one minute. African History Network show, we do with current events in history and politics, education, economic empowerment, entrepreneurship, relationships, love, sex, health issues, and much, much more. Unfortunately, many people confuse what racism means. Racism is a power structure. It was laws and policies that put us in this predicament. There's going to be laws and policies that take it out. So when you control the radius of a man or woman's thoughts, you control the compass of his or her actions because the mind can't do or teach what it doesn't know. We have it all on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation, the future radio. All right. 
Uh, on the line, we have uh, one of our Grandmaster Scholar Warriors, Professor James Small, who will be here in Detroit April 30th and uh, May 1st for the uh, One Africa Power and Unity Conference. And his presentation is on uh, rebirthing the African consciousness. So, so Professor Small, um, uh, thanks for coming on tonight once again. And uh, give us a little synopsis of, of what you're going to talk about at this two-day conference in your presentation. Yes, sir. Um, we're going to look at consciousness of being aware of the very instance you find yourself. To be conscious is to be aware of the very second, the very minute, the very hour, the very day, the very week, the very month mm -hmm. that you're having an experience with nature. Okay. You know, African consciousness is based on an understanding and a knowledge of nature and our relationship to nature and things in nature, plants, animals, etc., um, amphibians. What is our relationship to that? What is our relationship to earth, to water, to air? That's what African, what people call African spirituality is really based on. It should probably be called African sacred science. African sacred because science. we didn't have a religion. Right. We didn't have religions in Africa. We had a science of nature and a science of cosmology. Right. We knew where every star in the sky was at any given time in the year, the month, the day, the hour, or the minute. And we knew how it aligned, and we knew how that affected the human beings on Earth at that particular instant. You know, how it affected the plants, the animals on Earth in that instance, and our understanding through astronomy and astrology and a close knowledge of cosmology and its interrelationship with ecology, and then the human being's role in all of that. And that is what we call African sacred science, which people call African religion, but Africans didn't have a religion. We yep. didn't even have temples. Even in Egypt, we didn't have temples or places of worship as such. Mm -hmm. Those places we call them temples, those were universities, those were places where people were taught the sacred science. Okay. So they could come and live it and teach the masses in the community how to live in accordance with nature and things in nature. So that's how you knew what herb healed you or what herb helped you. Right. That's how you knew what bush was good to eat and what animal you could eat and you couldn't, what fish you could eat and you couldn't. What day to eat them and what time of year you couldn't eat them. And it's all a science that we understood. And because we were in a rhythm, a harmony with nature, we stayed fundamentally healthy. Right. And we understood that there's no such thing as death. How can anything die? We're matter and energy. All the laws of physics that we know in today will already explain to us why the matter nor energy can be destroyed when you transform. An African thing thing up in the beginning of time, these people were laughing at us. What the Western world calls science is what they've stolen from African sacred science. Now, let me say that again. Right. What the Western world calls science is what they stole from African sacred science, or what you call African spirituality. So, but spirituality don't describe the totality. Right. Of the sacred science. I think sacred science is a better label. Right. For it. So, so. And so. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Much of what we reject in Western science, Western science got it from our mothers and our fathers. Mm -hmm. And simply we cast it in their culture. Right. You know? Right. So when we begin to learn again, take for instance, and I'll be telling them as a woman, we said God is the creator, right? You know, and if you're Muslim, you Allah is the creator. If you're Yoruba, you say all of the Maori is the creator. If you're a Christian, you say God is the creator, etc. Mm -hmm. Well, the only way God can create is if a man and a woman have sex. The only way God could create is if a man and a woman have sex. And if they're sperm and that egg, find unity. And that right. woman then goes to the 10 months gestation and 
bring that new life form into the world. So the man and the woman, when they have sex intercourse, and they produce a child, and the woman goes through the nine months of pregnancy and the ten months of gestation, then that is God having that experience. So the man and the woman mm-hmm. is that aspect of God that creates. Right. So we're, we're God having a human experience, yeah. as, as you said before, as you said numerous times before. Right. We're that, God having that, a human that experience. God is the totality of everything. Mm-hmm. And we are a part of that totality in a very functional and intricate way. Right. That there could be no God without us. Mm-hmm. We're part of God. And each of us have our peculiar role. And that's what I said. We each God having the human experience. And in each one of us represent an aspect of the divine essence having this very peculiar experience that we call ourselves. And when we are conscious of that, and we are conscious of nature as a living organism, and conscious of the cosmology, and conscious like the, the people in the airway land of Ghana says, so they Lisa, that what we call God is the totality of creation itself. Right. And that's what I'm going to be discussing and tying it in with how you organize economic politics and culture. Yes. How you get control of land, labor, and resources, and how you organize them, the individual character, the family character, the neighborhood character, and the community character to produce a national character. Wow! Wow! Which can't separate. Okay, so so. Okay, so we're coming up here on a break in a few minutes, but the uh, so it's 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 correct to say Africans had a sacred science, not not religion. Africans have a sacred science, not religion. Because I know, Absolutely. right? Yeah, because I know, no, historically, we didn't have a religion. We had African spirituality, but it's really the African sacred science. Okay. Now, when you. We, we didn't need a religion because we understood the functioning mm-hmm. of all things and our relationship to the functioning of all things other than ourselves and the other things in nature's relationship to her. Okay. Okay. That's how we know this plant can heal this thing. This herb can protect you this way. This right. bush can help you this way. Eat this fish this time of year. Eat this fish that time of year. Okay. Right. You're dealing with nature. Wear this type of material this time of year. Wear this type this time of year. Because there is a chemical relationship between us and everything else that exists. Mm-hmm. Now, there is a mineral relationship between us and everything else that exists. Right, right. There's an energy relationship between us. There's a water relationship between us, you know? Right, exactly. And we have to understand how, how all of that communicates with one another. That's when you get into rebirth and after get consciousness. Right. So uh, we're coming up here on a break. Let me, I want to people let people know once again about the conference and then we're going to uh, continue this discussion. So everybody, the uh, One Africa Power and Unity Conference is taking place Saturday, April 30th, 2022 through Sunday, May 1st, 2022 at the Double Tree Hotel, downtown Detroit. Professor James Small is going to be one of our uh, a Brilliant scholars presenting, Professor Jane Small, Dr. Leonard Jeffries, who we had here on the show before, uh, Dr. Jeffries' wife, Dr. Rosson Jeffries, and Fiducci J- uh, Jehutimas, who we're going to have uh, here on the show uh, sometime this week. Professor Kabahai Watha Kamene, one of my teachers, we're going to have him on the show this week as well, Dr. Mawulana Karinga, um, and others, uh, Shahrazad Ali as well, they're going to be presenting. And uh, the conference theme illustrates that all cultures and peoples are linked together either through ethnicity language arts and culture presenters will unpack the historical connectivity and confluence of african people as they moved through the world so you can visit our website africanhistorynetwork.com we have the information there you can purchase it if you can't come in person you can live stream it from around the world so we have the information we just posted the link here on the thread of the broadcast go ahead professor small yes sir so when we understand african sacred science or what you call spirituality Mm -hmm. you can't separate it from your reality because it is your reality the problem is we're not conscious of our reality 
Mm. We're caught up in somebody else miseducated matrix. Right. Right, exactly, and, and and not conscious of the time, and and you have a lot of people who claim to be conscious, and they want to debate people and all this stuff, put other people down, things like this. Right, but right. <laughs> they're caught up in a false reality exactly. and created by the European matrix of illusion. Mm-hmm. It's like a sleight of hand. Mm-hmm. You think you're in the real place, and you find you're standing on air. Right, and the minute you realize you're standing on air, your butt's gonna crash. Right. Well, we've got to begin to understand it wasn't reality versus fantasy. And the white man has created a fantasy world mm-hmm. that he controls through stimulation and emotion. Right? Right. So right. he gives you stimulus. Sex is the major stimulus. Drugs, the drugs are stimulus. Alcohol, the different stimulus. Certain visual things in terms of looking at beautiful clothing, looking at beautiful body shapes. These are all stimulus that he used to control your reality and make you think that you're conscious of reality when you're totally unconscious wow. of reality. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what you're dealing with is just illusion. Exactly. 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 Okay, look, we're coming up here on the break. When we come back from the break, I want to talk about the difference between spirituality versus religion. Okay, when we come back from the break, and then we want to talk yeah. about uh, Passover, and, and, and what you were saying about Passover in your lecture, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Fragments of African Spirituality. And we're going to talk a little bit about Godfather of Harlem season three as well. Stand by, Professor Small. Uh, you listen to the African History yeah. Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation Future Radio on Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. All right. Stand by. Yeah, you can. Um, you, you can get a ticket for both days or I think you can get a ticket for one day uh kenya your ticket includes admission for yeah 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 you can get ticket admission for both days but also if you can't uh attend in person you can live stream the entire conference you can live stream it from around the world so i just posted the link here uh on the thread of the broadcast and uh to register and also in the information for this show on facebook and youtube we have the uh information and and the link to register for the conference you can also go to uh we're, we're going to have this on our website africanhistorynetwork.com uh and then uh also you can go to um uh hapifilm.com as well okay stand by i gotta get ready for this next segment here Okay. Uh, okay. Did you see my presentation? Did you all see my presentation on Easter Sunday? And we're rebroadcasting. I'm going through editing the video now, and we'll rebroadcast it uh, all this week. Did you did you all see my uh, presentation for Easter Sunday dealing with Easter origins, uh, pagan religions, uh, pagan traditions, uh, rabbits laying chicken eggs in the Exodus and black people? All right. So I'm going through editing it and editing in some captions, also adding in some um, the captions in the lower third. Back from breaking two minutes, stand by. Nine ten 
the Super Station, Detroit's only African American talk radio. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 910 AM, the Super Station Future Radio. Okay, we're speaking with uh, one of my teachers, Professor James Small, and he'll be one of the uh, scholars speaking at the uh, One Africa Power and Unity Conference uh, taking place at the Double Tree Hotel in Detroit, April 30th through May 1st. So, Professor Small, right before the break, uh, I said that uh, I want you to explain the difference between spirituality and religion. We know that Africans did not have a religion. We had an African sacred science. But what's the difference between spirituality and religion? Well, religion is an organized um, group of training and repetitive rituals. Mm -hmm. um, you, you, you go and you do your service on a particular day you have a certain set of rituals that you repeat on every occasion. Sometimes you have a literature, like a Bible, Torah, or the Koran, and the, your literature implies this is the beginning and this is the end of the process of knowing, which is the biggest falsehood in the world. <laughs> um, and so these rituals that you do in the church, the praying, the the, the, the reading of certain hymns a certain way on a certain day, um, the burning of certain candles, the pouring of certain oil. And these sets of rituals that we call the religion is, is trying to help. The word re means to do over again or go back, and religion means to bind. You're trying to use these these rituals and these ceremonies. And, 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 and this body of information in this book to bind you back to something. Because the word religion means to bind back. To, to so bind what is back. it that this religion is trying to bind you back to? Mm -hmm. But it's trying to bind you back to the, 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 uh, the, uh, the that's what it says, the wisdom of the ancestors. You know, the wisdom of your ancestors. But when you make religion the goal, then the process of going back never happens, you know, because your goal is to do this ritual, this repetitive ritual every Friday. You do this in the mosque every Saturday. You do this in the Hebrew temple every Sunday. You do this in the Christian church, and we do the same thing every week. Mm -hmm. And we have the same body of literature every week. And we have the same uh, sanctuary design it may vary to some degree, but it's pretty much the same all over the world. You have the same body of rituals and, 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 and folklore, the same statues. So religion is that. The word itself, what does that mean to bind back? But the process itself involves these sense of repetitive rituals, which, which is supposed to bind you back to a body of knowledge that should give you an enlightenment on how to live your life on a daily basis. Okay, all right. And mm -hmm. we ask the fundamental question when we look at the condition of the world, is that working? Right. Like most people do belong to one of these religions or other, and worship with them in any given week, most of the world, and yet the world is a murder pit of thieving, conniving, lying, deceiving, mischieving, individuals who right. are afraid and in anxiety or full of hatred and anger towards one another. Mm -hmm. If something isn't working in your ritualistic, repetitive process that you do on your holy days on a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Right, right. Spirituality is the ability to know and understand your relationship to nature and cosmology. Spirituality is the ability to understand and know your relationship to nature and cosmology. Nature and cosmology, okay. Cosmology means everything off of the planet. Nature means everything functional on the planet. The right. water, the fish, the birds, the animals, the plants. Um, all of the things that make up nature and all of its varied ecologies mm -hmm. has a rhythm, has a support rhythm. It's, 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 it's like the thing we call the heart. Mm -hmm. It has a harmony based on truth, justice, righteousness, and reciprocity. It balance, it cause, and effect. You know? 
and the the African spirituality seeks to understand that and participate as a part of that harmony. Right. Fully engage with nature and allow nature to fully engage with it. Fully engage with the cosmology and allow the cosmology to fully engage with you. For instance, the African scientists who we call astronomers, mm-hmm. when they discovered and studied for 25, 50,000 years the movement of the stars, the movement of the constellations, the, re- the reorganizing and advancing of stars and constellations at different times in the year, the movement of the moon, the movement of the sun, right? Right. They looked at all of those relationships on every given day and I asked, okay, what is the human being doing at that same moment in time? And how are they seemingly affected by the arrangement of the constellation and the arrangement, the location of the sun, and the location of the moon, and the location of the planets on any given day, on any given hour, on any given minute? And the scientists discovered that they couldn't give that body of knowledge to the masses in that scientific form. So they created another science called astrology to explain astronomy to the human being so they could apply it to their daily life. You got it? Yes. Yep. Apply it to their daily lives. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So you take take the knowledge of astronomy mm -hmm. and you repackage it in astrology so that people can take astronomy, the wisdom of astronomy, the wisdom you discover in astronomy, using the teaching tool of astrology and apply the wisdom of astronomy to their daily lives. Right. Apply to their daily lives. Exactly. Um, okay. So uh, yesterday was, was Easter. And I, I, I did what? A, <laughs> yesterday was Easter. Was East, Easter of what? <laughs> well, Easter, Easter, Ostara, but so I, I, I did a uh, I did a broadcast yesterday in uh, the day when a dead man is supposed to come back to life. Right, I had three clinical deaths and I came back to life. So they're going to call me Jesus three times. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I'm serious. I had three clinical deaths in my lifetime. Right, I know you told me about it. Back to life. Right. So what did that make me, Jesus, three times? <laughs> well, you, we, we're dealing with a retelling of a very ancient story. Now, just just my disclaimer here, just a second, yeah. Professor Small. What, what, what we may say may go outside the circumference of some people's awareness. Just because you never heard it, you know. just because you never heard it before, disagree with it or don't like it, does not mean it's not true. It just means but, you have to do some research to understand well, what we're the talking story, about. The story of Jesus is a beautiful story, right. but it's not a story of the life of the human being. It's the story of the sun in the three hundred and sixty-five day journey mm-hmm. around the earth. Yes. If you ever watched the Last Supper, right? Yes. If you're looking at the picture painted by Da Vinci, mm-hmm. who painted that? Leonardo da Vinci? Da Vinci, yes. He painted the, the picture of the Last Supper. Mm-hmm. Jesus is sitting at a table, and around his head is a light mm-hmm. because his brain is the sun, his brain is raw. So it emanates his light, which they call a halo, but don't explain to people what a halo is. Okay? Right. And so, and around the table is 12 other people. But the 12 people were broken into a group of four, mm-hmm. made up of three persons per group. Well, and only those yeah. three persons in each of the group are talking to one another. Look at the picture. Mm-hmm. Four, four groups of three. So right? What four, you're looking at. Four groups of three huh? people. Four groups of four three groups people. Three. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So what you're looking at is Jesus being presented as an anthropomorphic representation of the sun and the 12 disciples represent the 12 months and the four seasons right. revolving around the sun. Right. Right. I mean, are you saying that to tell the people so that they can look at it? Each of the 12 people, the 12 people are grouped in four groups.
groups of threes, and only those threes talking to one another. Mm-hmm. That represents the four seasons. Right. It is twelve of them, so that represents the twelve months. Right. They're evolving around the sun. It is a solar drama being explained to the ignorant masses of that day in an anthropomorphic representation, pictorial form, because that's how people learn them, because they didn't have schools and books and stuff. Right. Exactly. Is that it? Oh, no. So I, a, yeah. painting, mm-hmm. a painting in Europe as after the AD is the same thing as, as the, the, the um, hieroglyphic depictions you see in Egypt, in the tomb. Mm-hmm. They were using human beings, and that's called anthropomorphism, right. to represent concepts, ideas, and principles that they wanted the masses to grasp. Exactly. Okay, Professor Small, hold it right there. We're coming up on a break. When we come back, I want to talk about Passover and the Exodus. Mm-hmm. Okay, and black people. You listen to the African History Network show on Michael M. Hotel. We're speaking with one of my teachers, Professor James Small, who will be here in Detroit uh, April 30th through May 1st at the Double Tree Hotel for the uh, uh, One Africa Power and Unity Conference. We'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, stand by. Back from break in four minutes. Stand by. Okay, you can support the African History Network, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. Uh, We're going to post the information here. Okay. And this is our official Cash App account, dollar sign, the AHN show, S-H-O-W. So when you go to it, it says uh, Michael and shows my picture there. These other ones here are fake African History Network cash app accounts. And then we have the PayPal button also. And uh, we have a new session of uh, my online class, Ancient Kemet, the Moors and the Ma'afa, Understanding the Transatlantic Slave Trade, what they didn't teach you in school. We have a new session starting up um, Saturday, April 23rd. Uh, uh, 2022 2 p.m to 4 p.m eastern standard time it's a 10 week online class we deal with thousands of years of history what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place so as soon as you register there's bonus content that you can start watching and uh, we do all the sessions live and the sessions are archived and recorded so you can go back and watch it anytime stand by bathroom break in uh two minutes Back from breaking one minute. Back from breaking one minute. Stand by. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, the future radio. Okay, we're speaking with uh, Professor James Small. Now, uh, Professor Small, so uh, I know before in in your lecture, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Fragments of African Spirituality, you talked about the Passover and you, you, you talk about how it's really dealing with killing African children, okay? And I want to tie that yeah. to the I want to tie that to the Exodus as well. But but go ahead. 
Right, because remember, Passover also occurs leading up to the supposed Exodus. Mm-hmm. Now, it must be stated there's nothing in the history of Kemet. The best, the society that's kept the best kept history in the history of the world, but they don't put one thing in there about a Passover. Mm-hmm. They don't have one thing in there about chemists, in the history about chemists. They have nothing in the history about Jews, and nothing in the history about any Jews ever being enslaved. Right. But let's take the story, which I think is a fantasy story. Mm-hmm. Not just a fantasy, but a metaphorical fantasy for the purpose of teaching a group of people concept, ideas, and principles. Because that's what we're talking about here. Mm-hmm. And so if you talk about Passover, and they said that when Passover occurred, that God came, that the Israeli, the Israelite, put blood over their door, so God passed over their house right. and killed the firstborn of the house of the Egyptians. So what, what happened on that night is the murder of black male children. Right. The firstborn male of the black community across the country. It's called genocide today. Mm-hmm. So if they're admitting that this is something that occurred, they're blaming on their God, whatever. It was genocide. It was the murder of black children to intimidate uh, the Egyptian. Uh, that was the twenty. That was the. Uh, that was the the, the the 15th dynasty mm-hmm. that is, le- no, I'm sorry, the 17th dynasty um, leading into the 18th dynasty and the ousting of the hikes off from northern Kemet. Mm-hmm. And right. so the people who call themselves Hebrews put themselves in history in that experience of having to leave. If you are the, if you are the, uh, of you know, people, why if you can live and pass as e- as Egyptians, why are you running away? You're running away because you were collaborators with the colonizers. Mm-hmm. You were collaborators with the invaders. So the invaders are being given out, so you're running off from. Right, right. If you want to take it and make it that your history is right, then let's look at fundamental realities. Why are you running? You are the oppressed. You should be glad to see the Hicks off get kicked out. You said, thank God my brothers and sisters who came from the South to rescue me that you've come. But no, you ran away to the East. Mm-hmm. And in running, you created a scenario where the firstborn male in every Egyptian house was murdered by your God. But I know that if that really happened, it was murdered by your assassins mm-hmm. called genocide. Right. So when we watch these people saying they're celebrating Passover and they're celebrating something sacred, they're celebrating the murder of the firstborn male of every Egyptian household. African and African boys. Find that? African children. Yep. Okay, so the, the, very very yes. very quickly. So, now let's go ahead. And go next if you go to Leviticus or the next book up, whatever the book is after genocide, when they go into the land of the Canaan, they said they God told them to kill every man, woman, and children in every Canaanite town. Mm-hmm. And any woman, you can save the woman who were virgins and make them yours, but any woman that had known a man, murder her too. Right. Murder the chickens and the dogs. That's in the Bible, people. Right. That's in your Bible. Right. Okay, very very quickly, because we got three minutes and left in the show. you want to claim that legacy, <laughs> go ahead. Claim it. <laughs> very quickly. I'm, we're going to bring you back Sunday night when we have two hours also, brother. But uh, very quickly. So, <laughs> so, so on uh, mm-hmm. uh, yesterday when I did my broadcast, I, one of my uh, sources mm-hmm. that I cited was this article from History.com, the official website of the History Channel, called Passover. And after oh, they right. go after they go through mm-hmm. and explain what Passover is from the religious perspective. Then they have a section that says questions of historical accuracy. It says for centuries, scholars have been debating the details and historical merit of the events commemorated during the Passover. Despite numerous attempts, historians and archeologists have failed to corroborate the tale of the Jews enslavement in and mass exodus from Egypt. Although the ancient Egyptians kept their records, go ahead. credence that any of that is all fantasy. Right. All, all, although it's the ancient Egyptians, mm-hmm. go ahead, go ahead. 
listen to me. It's all it's allegorical mm-hmm. and metaphorical fantasy for the purpose of giving an identity to a bunch of traitors and collaborators against their own people. Right. It, so it goes on. It goes and on. Is that and, clear enough? Oh, absolutely. To the whole thing now, because you got to understand. Yep. Somebody had invaded Kenya, called the Hikes House, mm-hmm. and they made a second invasion. Mm-hmm. By the 17th dynasty, they're being driven out by Kemos and Amos mm-hmm. and, and, and then their father, um, and that's the brother named McNaughton's father, would drive them out. That's Amenhotep the third. Amenhotep the third. Yeah. Yeah. Amenhotep. And so if they want to cast themselves in that historical experience, then they got to cast themselves as traitors and collaborators. That committed genocide against their own people. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is that clear enough? Oh, absolutely. If absolutely. If you want to make a history, then let's go with real history then. Right, right. <laughs> and if you want to make that a historical moment, which there is no data anywhere in history, anthropology, archaeological, or literature, or any other way that supports anything to do with a Jewish exodus out of Kemet. Right. The, the, or a Jewish presence in Kemet to even make an exodus. Exactly. Exactly. Let me let me just uh, uh, wrap up with this very quickly. So it goes on to say, although the ancient Egyptians kept thorough records, no mention is made of an Israelite community within their midst or any calamities resembling the 10 biblical plagues. There is also no evidence of large encampments in the Sinai Peninsula, the fabled site of the Jews wandering or any sudden fluctuation in Israel's archaeological record that would indicate the departure and return of a large population. So uh, I'm done right there. <laughs> I mean, it does, does, this is the History yeah. Channel Once breaking this do down. That, you, you're done, but then you have to account for where did this phenomenon come from? Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, it is a collaborative where betray their own mm-hmm. and collaborated with the Hicksos, who wanted, when the Hicksos got kicked out, it's not like didn't give a damn about them, but they had to create an identity for themselves. And they created that false history, which you don't see written anywhere until after the so-called exodus back to the so-called Israel from Babylon. Right. Okay, we're going to bring you back Sunday. We'll get deeper into this as well. Let people know, how can they contact you? How can they bring you in to do lectures? How can they get your, your lectures or DVDs or whatever you have? What, what do they do? Yes, sir. Well, go to Professor Small African World dot com. Professor Small African World dot com. African World dot com. Mm-hmm. Okay, and he has it all there because I was on your website today. Professor Small, is it? Uh, okay, hold on. I, I've got it uh, right here. Uh, Professor James Small dot Professor James Small dot com or Professor. You can go to Professor James Small dot com. That's the website. Okay. Or you can go to Professor Small African World dot com. That's my Facebook history page. Okay. Okay. All right. Check that out, people. Okay. We'll, we'll talk to you. Uh, we'll talk to you later, Professor Small. Okay. We'll see you here in Detroit. Okay, brother. Yes, sir. Okay. Hotel. Peace and blessings. Okay, everybody. That's Professor James Small. We got to get out of here. Those watching on Facebook and YouTube. Keep watching for a few more minutes. We're going to squeeze in this story on Colin Kaepernick. Uh, be sure to support the African History Network. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App and through PayPal. PayPal.me forward slash the AHN show. Visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Also, we have the information for our new online class starting up Saturday, April 23rd, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade where they didn't teach you in school. Remember, right now is correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. We'll count up forever. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Peace. All right, stand by. All right, stand by, everybody. Okay. Uh, so visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. So we have a new uh, 10-week online class starting up, a new session of it. Class number one starts Saturday, April 23rd, 2022. Uh, ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, where they didn't teach you in school. Uh, the class is regularly $130. It's on sale $80. As soon as you register, we have bonus content. Uh, as soon as you register, there's bonus content that you can start watching also. And um, we have a couple of the uh, classes from the previous session archives so you can watch it. All right. 
uh, just click right here register here i'll post the link uh, as well and then um we have a new session of uh from the civil war to the civil rights movement of black power 1865 to 1968 starting up what's up here right now is the old session that's why it's discounted 60 dollars. so you can still register for that session but we have a new session starting up also and um you can register for the uh, you can register for both classes in the bundle pack um and the, the classes are regularly 130 dollars. the bundle pack is on sale 120 dollars, so it includes both classes okay um and if you've taken any of my online classes in the past email me at ahn show at africanhistorynetwork.com ahn show at africanhistorynetwork.com you get a 50 percent discount all right i, I want to go to this last story here and um one, one, and once again before uh before we uh continue once again the one africa power and unity conference is taking place um saturday april 30th through sunday may 1st okay this is in detroit people are coming from all over the country maybe some people coming from outside the country as well uh double tree hotel which is located at 525 west lafayette boulevard detroit michigan saturday april 30th 2022 sunday may 1st 2022 uh, so Professor Jane Small is going to be one of the uh, presenters. They'll, they'll be doing workshops and have panel discussions. I'll be there as well. I'll be a vendor. Uh, I may, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe on one of the panels. I'm not sure. I got to see what the schedule is. But uh, we're going to have people on the show all week who are going to be speaking there. And on our Sunday show, we're going to have uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Linda Jeffries back and Professor Jane Small. We're going to try to get Professor Kaba uh, Hiawatha Kamene back on. We should have Professor Kaba. I think we have them on the show tomorrow night, Tuesday night also. But we're going to have all three of them on Sunday. And then we'll have uh, Taki Grant, director of the film Hapi, the role of um, African culture and development of civilization. And we'll have Sister Felicia on as well. They're co-producers of the film and they're organizers of the conference. OK, um, if you can't join in person, if you can't come in person, they have a ticket where you can live stream the entire two day conference also. OK, so uh, we have this information on our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. And I posted the link here and it's also in the, in the thread of the broadcast as well. OK. All right. So I, I want to go to this next topic here. Um, Oh, be sure to watch the, uh, so the article I was referencing, this is from history.com, which is the official website of the History Channel. It's called Passover. And if you saw my broadcast on Sunday, my special Easter broadcast on Sunday, where we dealt with uh, Easter, uh, we dealt with Easter origins, uh, pagan traditions, rabbits laying chicken eggs, the exodus and black people and we talked about the passover and i talked about how is it's really celebrating the, the killing of african children african male babies and i referenced professor james smalls um uh, uh, professor james smalls um lecture christianity islam judaism fragments of african spirituality and we talked about this section here dealing with questions of historical accuracy also so go back and watch uh the broadcast from uh, April 17th. All right. Now, lastly, I want to get into um, there's a story uh, uh, dealing with uh, Colin Kaepernick. OK, and. Blackamericaweb.com has an article about it, and they, they did a story this morning on Good Morning America. Uh, Colin Kaepernick says he's ready uh, to play backup quarterback if need be to get back in the NFL. OK. And we remember Colin Kaepernick's uh, protests against uh, police brutality and white supremacy and racism and things like this. And um, uh, he was uh, banned from the NFL. OK, he became a free agent. He was banned from the NFL. He hasn't played since about 2017. Uh, we know there was a lawsuit that he filed. It was settled. Uh, lawsuit was settled out of court, um, but he still wants to play. OK, and uh, understandably so. He should have never been banned from the NFL, even though it wasn't a, an official ban. Um, he should have never been uh, banned by the, the white team owners. OK, but if we look at this article here from 
Black America Web. Um, it's been five years since NFL, since the NFL team last employed uh, Colin Kaepernick. And let me try to close some of these ads out here. Okay. So if we look at this article, let's switch over to this. Colin Kaepernick says he's ready to play uh, backup quarterback if need be to get back in the NFL. Okay. Um, and we know the USFL just started back up as well which is surprising but uh okay so uh it's been five years since colin kaepernick uh was last employed by an nfl team and while most admit that he's probably still better than many starting quarterbacks in the league today the apparent blackballing of uh colin kaepernick turned activist uh player turned activist doesn't seem to be letting up anytime soon Still, 34-year-old isn't giving up hope of one day getting back in the league. And according to TMZ, he's willing, he's even willing to take the role of a backup quarterback if that's what it takes to uh get back on the field. Now, recently the Super Bowl uh playing quarterback, recently the Super Bowl playing quarterback had an in-depth interview with uh uh NFL stars Chad uh, Johnson, Adam Pacman Jones, Brandon Marshall uh, for an episode of I Am Athlete. I Am Athlete. And it stated that he would not mind playing the bench for a, for a team so long as he gets another chance to prove his worth on the big stage. Okay. Um, and I want to pull up this. Uh, clip from good morning america also from uh monday april 18th let me cue that up here all right okay i know i have to find my way back in so i have to come in as a backup that's fine if i have to come in as a backup that's fine colin kaepernick told the guys but that's not where i'm staying and when I prove that I'm a starter, I want to be able to step on the field as such. When I prove I am a starter, I want to be able to step uh, step on the field as such. I just need that opportunity to walk through the door. Now, unfortunately uh, for, for Kaepernick, uh, team owners and coaches just don't want the drama that comes uh that comes with signing him for their team. Okay. They just don't want the drama that comes with signing him for their team. Outside of him being labeled uh, a distraction, teams fear the backlash uh, that'll come from uh, the Donald Trump supporters, MAGA country and the blue lives matter uh, activists who was silent when domestic terrorists were beating up police officers during the January 6, 2021 insurrection. And you had five officers who subsequently ended, ended up dying for various reasons. The, the Blue Lives Matter people were silent when domestic terrorists were beating up police officers and attacking the U.S. Capitol. Uh, so I'm still waiting on the Blue Lives Matter people to denounce the domestic terrorism uh from the trump supporters on january 6 to try to overthrow the government so during that time uh nfl uh teams have resorted to signing blatantly washed up quarterbacks to start for their team and even gotten a few players out of retirement to stink up uh to to uh, st uh stink it up for the franchise instead of giving common Kaepernick another shot uh, still, Kaepernick is not giving up and is hoping one team out there is brave enough to uh, welcome him into the into their locker room. But if the past few years have taught us anything. It's that bravery, honesty and fairness are in short order these days. And Kaepernick is bound to learn that lesson the hard way. 
so hopefully a team will pick him up. Maybe the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, where Brian Flores went, um, you know, as a, a assistant coach. So uh, I want to go to this clip here. This is from uh, Good Morning America today. They did a story uh, on this as well. Let's uh, go to this clip just a second here. Now to Colin Kaepernick, who's speaking out overnight, the quarterback talking with I Am Athlete about how badly he wants to return to the NFL. TJ Holmes is back with more on this. Good morning, TJ. And Stray, again, remember, he has not thrown a pass in the NFL since January 1st, 2017. We're talking about mm. five plus years now. So it's fair to say we're not sure where he is and how good he could be on a football field. But we're also not really sure what he's thinking. He doesn't talk much, doesn't give a lot of interviews. Well, he took questions from some fellow athletes and now we're hearing from him. And he says now he just needs an opportunity to walk through a door. He'll handle the rest from there. In one of his first interviews in years, Colin Kaepernick says he still hopes to once again be an NFL quarterback. Do you want to play football? Absolutely. I mean, that's without question. This candid session takes place after the free agent quarterback had a training session with former NFL stars Chad Ochocinco and Brandon Marshall. What you saw out here, that's five years of training behind the scenes to make sure I'm ready and stay ready at the highest level. You don't do that if you don't, if you don't have a passion and you don't believe you're going to find, find a way on that field. Kaepernick acknowledges that at this point, he'd sign as a backup. I know I have to find my way back in. Okay. So... Yeah, if I have to come in as a backup, that's fine. But that's not where I'm that's not where I'm staying. Kaepernick did secure one 2017 meeting with the Seattle Seahawks, but he's heard nothing in the five years since. He's even reached out to each team and participated in numerous public exhibitions. In his pursuit of a comeback, Kaepernick trained with Seattle wide receiver Aaron Fuller, through with current NFL players, even passing for scouts at the University of Michigan. Let me come in, compete, show you what I can do. The now 34-year-old is asking franchises and their GMs to see him as a no-distractions team player. The narrative was out that was out there was, oh, you know, it's going to be a media circus. What else comes with him? Kaepernick helps carry San Francisco to the Super Bowl in 2013, but he's gone from player to activist, kneeling as the national debate over police brutality ignited and paid a price for his protest. Fans burned his number seven jersey. Kaepernick hasn't thrown a pass in the NFL since the 2016 season, but he's been busy rolling out a Netflix series, Colin in black and white. He landed a lucrative Nike ad, landed on the USA Today bestseller list as a children's book author, and stayed in shape for the possibility of a contract to come. You had those dreams from when you're a kid. I mean, like, I'm gonna be, a, I'm gonna be an NFL player, and I'm gonna win a Super Bowl. And for me, I have, I have unfinished business on that front. And you can see more of that interview in full, full episode, I Am Athlete, on YouTube today at noon Eastern. And guys, remember, it was September 2016 when he took a knee for the first time. Mm -hmm. That was his last season in the NFL, that season that he did that. He's 34 now. We were just talking. He stays in shape. He hasn't played in a while, but you said this guy could still perform properly. Yeah, if you, if you look, if he wants to come in as a backup, I think he definitely could win a spot on a team in the NFL. You got to get the politics. Chance. Okay. No, no, that's all. You think it's the politics, not his ability? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Oh, no doubt. I think that that's pretty obvious. Okay. Thank you, TJ. Yeah, guys. All right. So that, yeah, that was from Good Morning America today. And uh, hopefully uh, Colin Kaepernick can come back into the league. Uh, maybe the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't think the Detroit Lions um, will take him. But <laughs> maybe the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, we'll pick him up and, you know, he deserves, he deserves to be back in the league. He's better than a lot of these quarterbacks they've been signing also. So, uh, we'll keep you abreast of what's going on, but check out that, check out the article also from, uh, blackamericaweb.com. Colin Kaepernick says he's ready to play backup QB quarterback if need be to get back in the NFL and, um, you can that clip from Good Morning America. That's on their YouTube channel. Good Morning America's uh, YouTube channel. OK, be sure to uh, register for our new 10 week online class uh, that starts up Saturday, April 23rd, class number one. Uh, so if you missed uh, uh, missed the class to start up in February, we have a, a new session of starting starting up Saturday. Um, 
April 23rd, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade where they didn't teach you in school. So we deal with thousands of years of history and what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. We do it. We, uh, it's a visual uh, class. So we do a PowerPoint presentation with book references, articles, video clips, uh, tons of articles as well. Uh, we also look at the timeline of history. The class is on sale $80, regularly $130. Uh, you can register at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. And um, also be sure to uh, support the African History Network. This is our 12th year anniversary of me broadcasting the African History Network. First started uh, March 10th, 2010. And my sixth year anniversary of broadcasting on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation WFDF. Uh, I started, um, it was April uh 2016 when i started the african history network show on 9 10 a.m superstation wfdf but um dollar sign the ahn show through cash app and through paypal paypal.me forward slash the ahn show these other cash app accounts are fake african history network cash app accounts i've made progress the uh, cash app has launched an investigation because there's about four or five fake african history network cash app accounts out there that have been stealing stealing money from us this is our only cash app account dollar sign the ahn show um and when you go to it it says michael and shows my picture there we have the link here in the uh paypal button also this up this helps us keep doing the research stay on the air keep broadcasting bring you uh shows like we did on sunday where we dealt with the history of easter and the origins of easter and passover and things like this and the exodus um the interview i did with dr leonard jeffries back on april 4th the interview we just did with professor james small uh as well because even though i'm on 9 10 uh am wfdf they don't pay me to do radio so uh we have to find other ways to support this and support the research okay look we have to get out of here remember at the african history network we focus on educating empowering and inspiring people of african descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now it's correct wrong behavior it's not over till we win we're kind of forever